you see that? It's a caribou, dude. Dude, it's a monster bull. It's way down there. Okay, I'll just follow you. Good? Yep. Oh snap, here's the big one, dude. Oh my God. I'm wildlife photographer Sergis Cannon, and I'm looking for the elusive Kenai Mountain caribou herd on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. This herd of roughly 300 barren ground caribou lives near the remote Resurrection Pass Trail, which extends miles from any town or road. I'm beginning with an aerial survey in hopes of pinpointing their location before biking up the pass and hiking west above the tree line. Just couldn't find them. Could have been hanging low down in the bushes, down in the willows. Who knows? But looks like we have to go in blind. It's wildlife. They do have pretty solid camouflage. Barren ground caribou undergo the longest migration of any land mammal, traveling in the hundreds of thousands to access suitable winter ranges. But for reasons not well understood, some caribou don't migrate at all, preferring an alternative strategy in an unlikely place, mountain ridges. The Kenai Mountains herd is one such non-migratory herd. They do have strong winds that blow these ridge tops clear, so they go up to winter and they seem to do fairly well, but they only have so many ridges that they can get on. And the real struggle to that herd is going from ridge to ridge. And I've seen where they've made trails going across in really deep snow. The introduction of this herd in 65 was the first of many after caribou were wiped out from the peninsula entirely. There's several theories on why the caribou disappeared on the Kenai. There were some huge fires, and that probably destroyed a lot of caribou range. During that time, there was a lot of mining operation going on in the Kenai. We had unregulated hunting, and the miners killed a lot of caribou. And by about 1915, caribou were pretty much gone on the Kenai. While caribou went extinct throughout the lower 48, all reintroduction efforts in these states failed due to three main factors. Habitat loss, predation, and crucially, a devastating parasite carried by white-tailed deer. That makes the Kenai Mountains herd, which lives far from any deer populations, the first successful caribou reintroduction in US history. Now, I just have to find them. Since my aerial survey didn't pan out, I asked some local hunters where I could expect to see them. Yeah, it's a tough one. You just never know where they're at. We can subsist on them, but they give us five, and we're lucky to shoot two. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a tough one. Is this happening? I'm biking 50 pounds of equipment up some 2,500 feet along the Resurrection Pass Trail. When I get above the tree line, I'll leave my bike and hike into the mountains towards the herd's approximate range. The going was slow and steady. I had to walk the bike when I went uphill, which was most of the trip. I had six days of food, and I was expecting a snowstorm somewhere around day three so I was thankful for a sunny day to start. I didn't have a specific destination in mind. I would camp where convenient and stop around every bend to check each slope and valley for signs of life. There's a sow and two large cubs up there, just running around up that hill like it's nothing. Excuse me, mountain. As I wound down for the day, I considered the task at hand. 
My goal is to tell an animal's story by using an environmental portrait which contextualizes it in its everyday natural habitat. For whatever reason, these caribou never leave their alpine home. Somehow, I have to capture that sense of belonging, and that means getting as deep into the mountains as possible. A passing biker told me he had just seen for the first time a caribou on the trail only five minutes prior. I decided to try and intercept it on the other side of the mountain, but I had to move cautiously because it could be anywhere, and the last thing I wanted was to spook it. I must have been so close, but he was gone. But now I knew there could be a lone bull on any ridgeline around any bend of the trail. For the first time since the aerial survey, I actually had hope. Yeah, the mud makes things kind of tough, you know, we're getting sprayed as we bike along, but it, it is a cool opportunity to see some of the tracks along the trail. We just came out of Resurrection Pass. I think we want to stay above the tree line now that we still have this elevation and just get up there, head west, get out into caribou country, see what we find. So we're probably going to ditch our bikes here and, and just take most of our stuff. That's when I first caught sight of the valley that would be my home for the next four days. I began to see more and more indicators that I was in the right place. I couldn't help but think of these crushed crowberries smeared of the white lichen as caribou tracks. Well, that's a good sign. Coyotes and wolves had left their mark on this weathered caribou skull. I must be getting close. Pretty exciting. That night, winds rose to 20 miles an hour, flattening the tent on top of me. The weight of the gear and the intensity of the trekking was getting to my head. Oh, just pounding and pounding from the wind. It'll be nice to just get on out of here and forget about this little spot. This little place of misery. I scanned the ridge line just like I had every 30 minutes for the past three days. But this time... Oh my gosh. No way. It's a bull chasing a cow. Dude, we found him. <laughs> There's two more. Probably half the distance as those other two. But this is a good sign for us. They can't see us. They're not gonna be able to see us till we're right on top of them. Let's go get them. <laughs> The wind kind of picked up and went towards a closer pair, so never saw them again. It was too foggy to tell, but maybe the other pair was still on the other side of the valley. God, it's all so I thought if I got up and around them, they wouldn't catch my scent. After finally making it to the top, I did see hundreds of caribou tracks. It was clearly a favorite hangout spot, but with only a couple hours of daylight left, 
I had to head back. My GPS said the weather would clear up around noon, but apparently mountains don't care about our weather reports. At this point, I was moving mostly just to keep warm. After two days of scanning three separate ridge lines, I saw nothing more of the two pairs. I was low on food, exhausted, discouraged, and freezing. So I decided it was time to head home. Are they running towards us? Do you see that? It's a caribou, dude. Dude, it's a monster bull. It's way down there. Okay, I'll just follow you. Good? Yep. After spending days climbing up and down mountains, to see a 400 pound caribou scale these was incredible. It was like he was flying. That's when I discovered he was in competition with another smaller bull, and they were both chasing a cow. Oh snap, here's the big one, dude. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Dude, he just ran them off. I reminded myself that this was likely one of the year's earliest snows in the mountains, and the caribou clearly preferred to be on the snowy ridges. It was like their playground. It was a beautiful encounter, but it wasn't close enough. It wasn't clear enough. You couldn't tell from my usable photos that the bull was even in the mountains. The sun is about to set, but if I can get the bull on the ridge top at eye level, that could be a perfect shot. I have to try. The large bull had won his cow, but they, along with the perfect photo, were out of reach. I didn't get the shot I wanted, but I settled for the most exquisite, desolate winter sunset I have ever seen. I'm out of food, and the trip is done. <laughs> or so I thought. These socks aren't supposed to do that. As I spent my morning trying to squeeze my feet inside my frozen boots, 
I was plagued with thoughts of what I could have done differently. Then, when I stopped by the creek to filter more water, I saw movement. As quickly as he appeared, he vanished back into his mountain home. <laughs>